Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about fear of failing or fear of messing up your art. I just wanted to share my experience that I've had over the past couple of months. I feel like it might be useful or helpful to someone who is probably experiencing the same thing. I've broken down three of the things that I did that really helped me get past that fear of failing and helped me push past that and actually achieve what I wanted to achieve from the very start. So last year in May, I began my YouTube channel. I did my very first YouTube video and that was also a self portrait. And if you want to check out that video, you can just click on the link above and it will take you and you can have a look. I did a self portrait and I also answered loads of random questions about myself. So it's pretty fun. It was sort of a introductory introduction to me sort of video. So I figured to commemorate having been on YouTube for a year, I would do another self portrait. I thought it would be a good opportunity to do a bit of reflection. And I was going to talk about my journey on YouTube. Now that would have been in May. It's now August. It took me two to three months to do a painting. And I'm going to explain why. Firstly, what you should know is that in May, we got a puppy. She is so adorable. Her name is Lilaps. She is a German Shepherd puppy. And I'm definitely gonna put some little home videos at the end of this. So if you wanna see her cute little face, um, you can at the end of the video. Now, anyone who has had a puppy or a large animal or pet, um, you'll know that there's a lot of commitment involved, especially when they're really young and we were getting up in the middle of the night and I do not do well with interrupted sleep. Um, but for me, it was a massive sort of learning curve. I've never had to deal with that before. So for the first couple of weeks after having got her, um, I just did not have the mental or physical energy to do any art. I was kind of balancing her with some other work and I just couldn't find that energy within me. And this sort of dragged on for a couple of weeks and then it was a month and then there was another month and the longer it went, the harder and harder it was for me to begin a drawing or begin a painting. I just started to build the pressure so much on myself and I kept thinking if I was to start painting now, my skills aren't going to be as good as they were several months ago because I haven't been practicing and I don't want to embarrass myself by painting something or drawing something that isn't going to be as good and then I won't have anything to post online, to show people. And I was definitely receiving a little bit of external pressure, but most of it was from myself and my thoughts. And that little negative person inside my head, he was telling me it's gonna be a waste of time. No one's gonna see it. It's gonna be a waste of my materials. It's not going to be good. And I don't know a single person on the planet who hasn't experienced self-doubt. I know this is very common, especially amongst um, creative individuals. So I'm sure lots of you can relate to how I was feeling. I also have this sort of tendency to, for me, as well as thinking I have to create the perfect painting or the perfect piece of art, I, for me, I also um, pressure myself into having almost the perfect circumstances, the perfect environment around me. I tend to put off starting something if, for example, my desk isn't clear or if um, I really struggle if I have something kind of in the afternoon uh, to do anything in those morning hours because I don't I know that I don't have the full day ahead of me. That's definitely a very personal thing for me, but that is something that I found to be very much of a barrier. So the longer this time went, the harder and harder mentally I was making it for myself to start. So I'm going to share with you the things that I did that 
made it easier for me to start drawing, start painting again, and hopefully these will be useful for you guys as well. Now, the first thing it is incredibly important to remember is that there's absolutely zero pressure for you to post or share any of this with anyone. Just turn off that pressure cooker, you don't need it. At the end of the day, if you're proud of what you've made, then you can share it. But don't set up that, um, you, you, you're kind of setting yourself up to fail at the beginning by giving yourself all of that unnecessary pressure just because of something as insignificant as social media can be. You definitely need to dial down the importance that we give social media. Sometimes it's uh, not very good for our creativity. So the first thing that you can do is do some studies. It sounds so simple, but for me, just picking up a pencil and a piece of paper, the two most basic tools in an artist's arsenal was super easy. It was very hard for me to not justify doing that because it's so easy. So it wasn't a lot of setup involved. I couldn't procrastinate with getting loads of paints out of things. It was just a pen and a pencil and a piece of paper. And then just grab some of your favorite references, whatever you want to draw. Don't feel bullied into having to draw um, the anatomy if you don't want to. If you want to draw something fun, draw something fun. Just do it for you. And I think it's helpful because it's just something. It's a little something and it's a start. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the point of a study. It can be rough. It can be loose. It's more about just letting yourself be at your fullest creative self and just putting that on paper. If however you struggle with just doing that, second thing that I think would be beneficial is to time yourself. Just get your phone out, set yourself a timer, set yourself a timer for maybe 10 or 15 minutes because you think it's really easy to find 10 minutes in the day to do a little bit of drawing, especially if it's just pencil and paper. And it's really um, useful because you're just setting yourself a small goal so you're not <laughs> you're not pressurizing yourself going oh my goodness I have to make this painting and it has to be magnificent and people need to love it it's something easy to achieve and once you've achieved it you'll feel so much better and what I really enjoy about these first two things that you can do is that after a week if you've done three or four so that's not even every day if you've done three or four studies in the week that is going to be so much more progression than if you do what I did which is to do one painting over two months you're gonna have progressed your skills a lot more you're going to have feel more comfortable and more confident and I guarantee you'll be able to look back over the studies that you've done and see an improvement from the first one you did to the last one you did. So you're gonna feel so much more better about your abilities. And the third thing that you can do, which was something I actually ended up doing sort of spontaneously whilst I was painting, is to try something new. Now, I have never done, not really properly, sort of a gouache portrait painting. Uh, I had intended to do this really just with watercolors and I kind of ended up doing most of it with gouache which was a bit different for me but I actually ended up really enjoying it and if you try something new that you haven't done before then there's no reason for you to think that you're going to fail it's something new you can't compare it to something that you've done before that you'll think, oh, I'm gonna be rubbish at it because look, here's an example and here's an example. In your head, it's gonna be harder to justify that. And if you're trying something new, it's gonna be exciting. You're gonna be motivated to try it. Pick a medium that you've always wanted to have a go at and just have a go. There's gonna be a lot less pressure. And at the end of the day, once you've finished it, I bet you'll be so much more motivated to keep going and to try doing different things because it's fun and you should definitely give yourself credit for what you will have achieved at the end of this if you're doing the little studies and if you're just trying something new you can look back and pat yourself on the back because you did something and doing something is what counts 
you'll be able to look back at all of the things that you've done and see how much you've improved and you'll probably even be inspired by the art that you've made to keep on going and to keep making more art. I hope you guys will find these tips helpful. I found them really helpful for me just to break out of that fear of, fear of failure and to just keep going and get that ball rolling and get starting to make art again and feel like my old creative self. I hope you'll join me for my next video. Remember, if you want to see little videos of Paparino, I'll be tagging those at the end of the video. She's super cute, so you should definitely have a look. Don't forget to like, comment, and, su and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you've had experience with fear of failure, or maybe you're going through it now, just leave a comment and we can all give each other the reassurance and confidence boost that we need and deserve. I hope to see you all on my next video. See you all next time. Bye everyone. Thank <laughs> you.